Welcome guys, it is WebDevMania again and today we are going to build a Next.js 13 website, a blog website. So you see here the catalog, here I can click let's say on this blog, here I can comment something, here I can then click on delete because I have commented and yes here I can like and right now let me create one. So here new blog 1, 2, 3. Here let's pick that category and let's pick this image exactly here and right now I clicked on create. So if it's a success and it will be a success as you see, we are redirected to the details page and right now you see here the image category, I can like it, you see when it was posted, I can comment as much as I want here and when I comment a lot, you see here it overflows successfully. Okay, I can click to delete, I will sure you want to delete it right now, I'm not going to, but let's try the edit. So here you see the title is new block one, two, three. Let me remove the numbers here, just new block. Right now I click on edit and you see here it is persisted. I can refresh the page and everything is here. I can even change the image. So here let me pick the image of this burger. I know it's not a mountain, but just to see the functionality. Okay, so you see it. Welcome again guys, let's start developing. So the first part for our application is to install the Next.js app. So here let's go to your browser of choice and let's type here next.js installation. So here you see this link here, just click on it and you see here the line of code to install our Next.js application. So here let's go to our VS code and let's paste it here npx create next app so here just click on it and here we will get some questions so the name of the app is isn't that important i'm just going to name it let's say block app would you like to use typescript no yes and yes no src directory yes use app router yes would you like to customize the default import alias no and it will be installed soon okay we successfully have initialized our next.js application the next part is to install our dependencies so here while we are in the, the the terminal, let's type here npm i and let's install the dependencies that we're going to need. So let's start. The first one is bcrypt, then cloudinary. We are going to use it for image uploading a little bit later. Then JSON web token for authentication, mongoose, then next out for authentication, react icons for icons, react Toastify to for notifications and the last dependency that we're going to install is time ago which is used for formatting date so actually it's uh, more than less than half of the dependencies are, are let's say more you need to know them the other one like react icons react toastify they don't you don't need to read anything they are just used for one thing and while it's installing let's make our folder structure here so here we have the air air src folder and here the app folder so as you may know next.js next.js 13 came out with a 13.4 version and it have some new things rather than next.js 12 so here the routing is different the api fetching is different and all of this stuff so while i'm building the application i'm going to explain the things so here the app folder is our main folder and inside our source folder actually I'm going to make here components folder for our components. I'm going to have here a lib and I'm going to have a models folder. So our lib will have some uh, helper functions and the models will be for our mongoose. So I have uh, four components so let me make them. So here I'm going to make four folders so here block cart. Then I'm going to make comment, then I'm going to have here footer and lastly I'm going to have nav bar. So here I'm just, I'm just going to close the app so you don't get confused here inside the old of folders. So here inside every single folder inside our components I'm going to create here a JSX file. So here JSX file and you see here this RFC E is an extension is VS code. So here ES7 you are going to see it. So ES7, not this one actually, this one, yes, with 8 million downloads plus. Okay, so just let me go here, let me close the terminal, and here I'm going to make a CSS module file. A lot of people I see use Tailwind, but I prefer 
to use CSS modules because Tailwind, you know, when you write a lot of CSS inside your HTML, it just it doesn't look right, at least in my eyes. That's my opinion. Then here I'm going to make a, again JSX file and again a CSS file for the comment component. So here, oops, import classes from dot slash. Then I'm going to use here the footer dot JSX RFC footer dot module dot CSS import classes from here dot slash. And lastly is the nav bar. So here nav bar JSX nav bar dot module dot CSS. And of course we import the styling sheets. So we have successfully done this part. And while we are at it, let's look at our app directory here. So you see here the page the page.js. So let's start our application. So here let's run npm run dev. Of course, I need to be here in CD block app and then npm run dev and it will start our application. So we can see what is happening. And while it's loading here, I want to explain here this is the main the main page here, the page.js. And the layout.js is the layout that we're going to have for our application. So here, of course, I want every single page in our application to have here a navbar on the top and the footer of the on the bottom. Just like this. And remember to put it inside the body. If you put it, let's say, like this, you are going to have error or something. I'm going to even show you. Okay, you see here some mirrors. You see here the hydration field. So right now move it like this and you're not going to have any errors. You see here no error. Okay, and here inside the page.js I want to remove all of these things here. So just like this, remove it and here I'm going to have a div. And here I usually like to name that object instead of styles classes, but that's not important. And here I see we have a globals.css. So inside our globals.css, you see this CSS file. I want to write my default stylings before continuing. So there are just a few. So here box sizing border box, zero margin, and zero padding. This is it. And just for the anchor tag, text decoration none, none to remove that underline that is by default, which I remove every single time. And here color inherit to get rid of the blue color of links, which are again default. So this is for globals.css. Okay, here we have written our components. Let me see how it's looking. You see, just navbar and footer. So my friends, the next part is to actually make the navbar. So this is the first part of every single application that I write, I think. Okay, so here we have the navbar and actually I'm, I'm just going to first write the JSX. And let's start. So here I'm going to have class name is going to be here classes.container then I'm going to have classes.wrapper and here I'm going to have classes.left which is going to be not a diff actually but an h2 and here of course I need to change the closing tag and inside I'm going to have link and here link come on link and you see here from next li from next link so when you write just react.js you need to install another dependencies, uh, dependency, React Router DOM, to be able to use this link. But here in Next.js, it just come out of the framework. So this is very nice, in my opinion. And here, instead of the two attributes which we use in React Router DOM's link, here it is href, just like in a regular anchor tag. And here it's just the slash to navigate us to the homepage, and here WebDevMania, my channel name. Then here, I'm going to give a right side, which is going to be UL. So if you want to write diff, you can just write diff like this. But if you want to explicitly write something else rather than a diff, you need to write it before the dot. So here UL, so here unordered list dot classes dot write. And this will make a UL with the class name of, you guessed it, right. And inside here, I'm going to have a first is going to be displayed different depending on if the user is logged in or not. So here we st we don't have authentication yet. We ha we just started making our application. I'm just going to name some variable. Let's say logged in is going to be set to true. Of course, later we are going to do this programmatically with the authentication and stuff. But right now we are in the start of development process. Right now we're going to do it just like this here. So 
if logged in is true, we're going to display something else again. We're going to display something. So let's make this on several lines and let's start writing our condition. So here, if we are logged in, we're going to show here a diff just like this and here an image. And here we don't write image like this, like the default HTML image tag. We do it like this image like this and we again import it from next but this time slash image so this is another thing that is different from react and vanilla js and here i'm going to have a src of person and here width of 45 and height of 45 and when you write the string number uh, the string number here inside this means that it's pixels you don't write explicitly pixels you just leave it just the number and here uh, i'm going to give on click i'm going to uh, have some function which is handle show drop down this is just for toggling the drop down and here it's going to be a state here so just to not get you confused the state is going to be called show drop down set show drop down and here oops your state is going to be equal by default to false and you see right now the server components are by default inside Next.js server components. So just let me declare the function to get rid of that specific error. And I'm going to show you another error that I want to show you right now. So here it says show dropdown is going to be set to true. But the thing that I wanted to point out is here. Okay, I'm just going to write something to get rid of an error. You see, I have no error. Okay, so the thing that I wanted to show you here, when I go, you see, you are importing a component that needs use state. It only works in a client component, but none of its parents are marked with use client. So they are server components by default. So I told you a little bit earlier that by default, they are server components. And in order to use, if you want to use state or you want to attach some on click event or some or something like this, you need to write use client explicitly above everything. So here, if I write use client just like this in a string, right now the error is no more. And here the other error is person is not defined. This is because I have nothing inside my public folder, no images or anything. So right now I'm going to go to my GitHub to install my images. So let's go. So here GitHub, Mania repositories. Let me go here. SRC. Uh, then I'm going to go to the public and here I'm just going to get this URL and I'm going to go to this website which I use for downloading images. So just paste the link here and they're going to be downloaded. So right now, come on. Okay. And here I'm going to name it. I'm just going to leave that default name. And I have moved the images to my folder and you see here inside our public folder, I have all of the images that I want my application to have. So here let me import a person image specifically. So here import person from dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash public slash in here person dot jpeg. So here when we go to our application, just let me close this thing here. You see we have just the image here, so we have no error or something. And here, while we are at it, I want to make a function just handle height drop down and it's going to be set show drop down to false. Of course, I can just use uh, in an on click the, the state directly, the setter function, but I prefer this way because it's a little bit cleaner. And here, let me make the condition is going to be show drop down and here to ampersand. So if that is true, we're going to show here classes dot drop down and inside I'm going to have AI outline close which is just for closing that drop down if you don't want to see it anymore so let me import that icon here from react icon slash AI and here I'm going to give it a class name of classes dot close icon and here on click is going to be of course handle height drop down then Below that icon here, I'm going to have a button with a class name of logout and you guessed the text is logout. And I'm going to have here a link. Come on, link here, capital first letter and it's going to be for create. And it's going to navigate us to the hrefs of create hyphen post. And here is going to be class name is going to be classes.create. And of course, I'm going to attach to both of these uh, 
elements i'm going to attach the handle height come on handle height drop down and let me see the drop down right now of course we cannot see it but if i click on the image you see it of course we're going to make it a lot more beautiful we're going to style it and stuff but for now this is it and here i want to make the else here so here we are ready with this part after the question mark but after the colon here let me see what we have so this will be shown for users that are not logged in so for guests in here button is going to be for log in and it's going to have again class name of login and then i'm going to have here link which is going to navigate us so here text of register and it's going to navigate us to register and we have here an error because we must have a parent element wrapping dog's child element and right now the error is no more okay we are ready with the jsx of the nav bar but of course we need to go to our css to make it look nice so here src components navbar navbar.module.css and let's start typing our css so just let me make some space here let's go so here dot container is going to be position of sticky then the index of 999 then height is of 6 pixel width of 100 percent background color is going to be white then box shadow is going to be here 2 pixel 5 pixel 27 pixel minus 8 pixel and here rgba 0 0 0 0 0.1 then we're going to have a display of flags justify content of center align items of center top of zero and left of zero then our wrapper is going to have here a width of 85 percent margin of zero auto to center it display of flex justify content of space between align items of center and position of relative so let me see right now how it's looking okay it's looking a little bit better right now but still we have a lot more styles to write uh, okay after the wrapper here we have the dot left which is a font size of 36 pixel and color of rgb 26 108 26 then dot right is going to have display of flex align items of center and instead of writing a line item center like this you can just write the shortcut a i c and you see i just click it and align item center i don't write super fast i just use this short shorter uh, right, how to write it shorter and here df for display of flex then justify content of space between is j j csp and so on and so on so let me get back to the to my styling so here display of flex align items of center and gap of 1.25 then dot right then the diff and then the image inside is going to have an object fit of cover border radius of 50 percent to make it a circle and cursor of pointer to indicate that it's a clickable then i'm going to start the dot logout which is going to have margin left of one irm padding of 0 0.4 on top and bottom and one on left and right border none core of fff then border radius of 8 pixel font weight of bold font size of 17 pixel and background color is going to be 10 c142 then the dot create is going to give a color of 444 font size of 18 pixel font weight of 300 and this is for the create then we have the login so let's go dot login is going to be outline of none border none padding of 0 0.5 on top and bottom and 1.25 on left and right font size oops font size of 17 pixel and here this is the shortcut this is the word i forgot earlier so this is the shorter way so the shortcut to write css so you see oops f f z 17 and you see how it is then we have a background color of again 10 c142 white color then color of white i mean and border radius is going to be 12 pixel then dot drop down is going to be positioned absolute background color is going to be here ef 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 padding of one rm 
display of flex, flex direction is going to be common, align items of center, gap of 1.25 ARM, top of 2.5 ARM, right of minus 3 ARM, and border radius is going to be 8 pixel. So let me see right now how everything is looking. And you see here, you can already see the drop down when I click on it. I just want to make this position absolute. So we're going to do it just soon. Don't worry. Okay, after the drop down here, I want to target the second child. So here, drop down and child two. And oops, this is going to be here margin top of one ARM. Then I want to target here dot drop down and here cursor pointer. So everything is going to be clickable. And then the close icon finally, close icon here, positioned absolute. Then it's going to have top of 0.3 ARM and right of 0.3 ARM. So when I click here, you see how it is. So it is looking very nice. And let me change here that variable to false. So we see the other side. So here you see login and register. And here I'm going to just apply it with cursor pointer because it's a clickable, of course. So you see, okay. And I'm going to leave it just like this. Okay, we are ready with the nav bar. And the next part is to here, I want to show you the block. I have uh, some data here, not from the server or something, just some dummy data. So here inside the lip, I want to make several files. But right now I'm just going to make one. So here data.js. And here I'm going to go to my GitHub. So to my GitHub and I'm going to copy that dummy data inside my lip. So you don't need to write it again by hand. So here SRC app or not app. It's just here inside the lip. My bad. And here let me just copy it. Okay. And here I'm just pasting. Nice. Then let me go here. Uh, not to, let me cross here the components and let me go here to my app. And then let me go here to page.js here. So right now I'm just going to display some blocks as a dummy data. And after this, we're going to write here the API, then authentication, and then we're going to programmatically publish some blocks. So right now in, we're going to display some dummy data. So here class name is going to be classes.container. Then I'm going to have classes.wrapper and here it is and here I cannot use uh, the, I'm not sure, the shortcut inside the JSX because here it's not a JSX file. So let me change it. And right now, you see, I'm able to use it. And here, blocks. So here, blocks.map and here, block. And an instant return. And here, we're going to import the block card from our component. We're going to have here, do I have an ID here? I'm just going to use, let's say, the title as a key. So, of course, you don't you do that. But right now, it's a dummy data. We don't care. And here, we pass the block. So, here, we get it back. So, here, oops, block. And then, we're going to restructure the block. So, right now, let me see what we're going to restructure. Okay, so here, the title, description, image, uh, author wait just this what we have here actually so here title description image and author id we're just going to need those three things here so here image okay and then for our block card here i'm going to give class name is going to be classes.container then i'm going to give here classes.wrapper and then inside my div here i'm going to give here a link which is going to show which is going to be have a class name of classes dot image container and the href is going to be here right now like this so here href block to id but right now as you know we're using dummy data as i told you earlier we don't have the id from our database or something so right now i'm just going to leave the href to our home page later we're going to change it and here we're going to show the image url oops so let me just import it and here source is going to be just image and then width is going to be 350 and height is going to be 350 just like this here then below that link i'm going to have classes dot blood block data and here classes dot left is going to have here an h3 which is just the blog dot title 
and below we're going to have just the description so actually why i'm writing blog dot we can just do it like this and uh let me see how it's looking i think this is for now here i have another thing actually so here below the dot left of course i have a dot right and here is going to be just here some numbers so here let's put 12 and here space and here is going to be is liked and here we're going to show different things and right now this variable i'm just going to write it like this so here is liked is set to true but later of course we're going to check it from the from the data from our database and so on and so on but just for now to write our ui ai few like and let me import it so here import ai few like from react icons ai and here ai outline close outline like not close but just like like this and let me import this thing as well and let me put here size of 20 of both of them so oops not two but 20 and let me see right now how it's looking okay it's looking like this because we have not styled it first let me go here not to the blockart.css but to our page.module.css let me delete everything here which is you the thing that you see and here let me start so here dot container is height of 100 ph minus 6 pixel and in order to see what i'm styling i'm just going to split the screen like this then after the height i am just applying the width of 100 percent then dot wrapper is going to be height of 100 percent width of 85 percent margin of zero auto then margin top of 2.5 irm display of flex flex wrap of wrap and gap of 7.5 irm and this is actually so right now you see how are they styled and spaced out and here actually uh, inside the page.jsx i can write here an h2 so here an h2 between the container and the wrapper which is going to be web dev mania oops just like this web dev manias block website and here the h2 so let me go here dot container and the h2 inside is going to have text align of center core of 333 and margin top of 1.5 irm so right now you see how it is and i can even make it a little bit bigger so font size of 32 pixel right now let me see okay it looks better okay and let me start the block card so right now let me go here to block card.css let me open even the jsx so you see what i am styling so like this and let's start styling so here dot container is going to have a width of 30 uh 23 percent then height of 540 pixel box shadow is going to be 2 pixel 5 pixel 27 pixel and minus 8 pixel rgba 000, 000 0.15 and let me make it like this transition of 150 milliseconds and border radius of 12 pixel then dot container is on hover effect of course so here dot hover and i'm just going to copy this box shadow and change here the opacity so it's going to be 0 0.4 here the opacity so when when i hover you see how it is getting darker behind with the from the shadow nice then uh, this for the hover then dot wrapper is going to have panic of 1.25 irm so right now you see again another shortcut then width of 100 percent another shortcut height of 100 percent display of flex and flex direction here of k1 so right now you see how it's looking but we still have to style it a little bit more then dot wrapper and the image container inside so here dot image container and the image is going to have here object fit of cover then border radius of 20 pixel with a functional percent and margin of zero auto then dot block data is going to have margin lift of 0.75 irm display of flex justify content of space between and align items of center then dot block data dot left and here the h3 inside which is this thing here is going to have the following styles so font size of 28 pixel font weight of both margin top of 1.5 rm and margin bottom of 1.25 rm 
then oops then dot block data dot left and the p inside which is the description you see here is going to have just a color of 666 so it's a little bit grayish color then dot block data inside the dot left and inside the span but this is a thing that i have not yet written let me just see for a second this is the created by okay i'm just going to write it right now so here created by and here another span and let me write first of january this of course is going to be we're going to get the data from the server programmatically and all this stuff but right now i'm just going to write some dummy data just for the to, to make the to make it look good with the css and here let me write margin top of two rm display of flex align items of center gap of 0.5 rm and font size of 15 pixel then dot block data dot left the span and again on another span so the next span is going to have a color of 777 and lastly dot right so here block data dot right is going to have font size of 24 pixel cursor of pointer display of flex and items of center and gap of 0.5 arm so right now you see how they're looking they look quite beautiful to me so you when i hover of course you see how are they looking very nice and here for the ui the next part is just to make the footer guys just let's write the footer and then we're going to start writing the api logic so the footer is very simple uh let me go is just let me close here the app let me open the footer here and let's start so here i'm going to give a semantic footer so here you see the footer tag and here class name is going to be classes dot footer then i'm going to have classes dot wrapper and inside i'm going to have three columns so here classes dot co and here asterisk three so right now we're going to have three divs with the class name of cone so right now you see how it is here h2 is going to be about the app and below here i'm going to have a paragraph with just some dummy text so here just let me write what am just it split it on several lines because you see how long it is come on okay nice then for the next column here i'm going to have contacts then i'm going to have here a span phone one two three four five six seven eight nine of course this is not my real this is not my real phone number then span another span with the youtube of web dev mania so here my youtube channel and then github again github web dev mania nice and here the last column is location so location and here i have span continent of europe below it i'm going to have country of bulgaria which is my home country and below i'm going to have again current location and you probably guessed right again bulgaria okay let me start writing the css for our footer it's going to be very we're going to write it very fast so don't worry dot footer is going to have a width of 100 percent height of 400 pixel and margin top of 5 irm then dot wrapper is with width of 85 percent height of 100 percent margin of zero auto so zero auto to center it display of flex justify content of space between and align items of center then dot column is going to be display of flex flex direction of column and gap of 0.5 irm then dot co and here the h2 inside is going to be with the following styles so margin bottom of 15 pixel justify self of flex start and margin left of you heard me right minus 5 pixel i just want to space it a little bit and then the paragraph inside the column is max with max width of 425 pixel color of 555 font size of 15 pixels so right now you see how the footer looks like and i'm not sure why it is spaced out like this probably i forgot to write here inside the page dot module here right so dot container let me see just a little bit just going to fix it just now and here it's not just height but it's minimum height just like this here and when we go back to our application you see how it is spaced out as we intended to be so we are ready here with the ui part of the home page but i want right now to go into our api and to let and to write it because we're going to need it of course 
So let me close everything here that we have. And right now, you see here we are into the app folder. And right now you probably wonder, okay, with Dev Mania, how we are going to write our API in Next.js 13. So inside our app directory here, we are going to make an API folder. So usually you can write your API routes everywhere, but don't do it, write it inside the API because you want to have a clear separation of code. Technically it's possible, practically don't do it. So here just make an API folder inside your app. So app and here API and then here let's say that you want to have let's say here block. So here block folder and let's say you want to go to the index. So here just route.js and it must be named route.js. So here it's going to be localhost your port in our case it's 3000 slash API slash block and here it must be named route. So here files inside must be named route.js and let's say then that we want to access some let's say I'm just going to copy the link and then here some ID. So if you want to do it like this then here we make a new folder with uh, with square brackets and then we make again here route.js here. So you see how it is nested here. So here API block the ID and then the route.js here inside the ID here. So this is how we're going to access it. Okay, enough talking here. Let me make the other folders inside our API. So here I'm going to have out, I'm going to have a comment and I'm going to have here register. So which with, with which one should I start first? I think it should be wise to start with the register here. So inside our register, as I told you, it must be here named route.js, so route.js. And here is going to be access. I'm going to show you if you don't uh, if you still don't get the concept. So it is file based routing. So here API. So here because we are inside the API folder and it will go to the register. So here register and this is the URL to access our register. Okay, so here, of course, in order to be able to write our code, we need to connect to our database. So this is the um, part that we must do here. So here mongodb.com. And here, let me click on sign in and you probably know MongoDB if you have watched my videos and if not a lot, uh, you probably know it is very famous inside the web dev uh, sphere. Okay, so let me write here my password and let me log in here. Okay, it's loading, loading, come on. Okay, so here let me click on the, the settings icon. So here settings icon, then projects you see here then new project and here just let me name my application so block up next 13 next create project again loading then uh, build a database here click this the the free one I at least I have no intentions to pay for this project uh, create and here the username and password for your database. I'm just going to name them username one to three, just for demo purposes to not forget them. Here, create user. And here I'm going to make here like this, the API address to be able to be accessed from everywhere. Go to databases. And here connect drivers. And here, let me copy this here. Okay. And here I want to make an env file inside my block app so here like this dot env and we make the env file because this data is a secretive information you don't want to share your mongo url to anyone you, you need to keep it for yourself only for only for yourself so that's why we use environmental variables in here username one two three for the password and here we are ready actually with the Mon with the mongo and Mo mongoose can uh with the with making the database but we need to make here db.connect oh, oops uh, just db.js not connect and here let me just copy this code here inside you see here db.js because this code here is just a specific way of connecting to the database using next.js you know in node.js is different but here i just don't want to write the entire code and you don't need to know how it works you just need to know that it works here okay so you see here we have a connect and disconnect so 
we are ready with this part i just don't didn't want to lose your time of course you can view it for yourself if you are interested here inside the github okay and uh of course let me start making here the regist the and let me start here writing the code inside our route.js so here import db like this then import bcrypt from bcrypt and then import user from models like this or so models user and i see that we haven't done this thing here i forgot somehow to write the models so at least they're going to be very fast to write so here let me go to the you to the model so here models user dot js blog dot js and then comment dot js and this is actually the last part before we start writing our api i just somehow forgot to write the models i don't know how <laughs> okay let's write here first the user so import mongoose from mongoose then const user schema is equal to new mongoose dot schema and here we have three fields username which is going to be a type of a string is going to be required of course and let me set it to unique as well then we're going to have an email which i'm going to write it by hand they is going to have the same properties here so again type of string required true and unique to true and you probably don't need and you probably get the point why it's required and unique every single application that i have been to have this almost almost every single application have this feature you cannot have two accounts with the same email it doesn't make sense okay and then the last part is password so here it's type string and of course required to true but i'm not going to set it to, to unique and here i'm going to apply the timestamps to true so this will have so this will give us two additional fields when it was last updated and when it was created the timestamp set to true okay and then here export default mongoose dot models dot user and here mongoose dot model user user schema i know the syntax as i told you earlier it's a little bit different than the syntax in node.js this is another difference that i have noticed myself as well okay this is for the user then the next one is to write the block so here block.js import mongoose from mongoose then const block schema is equal to new mongoose dot schema and here title is going to be type of a string required set to true and minimum is going to be set to four characters so the title cannot be shorter than four characters then dot description i mean not dot description but just description is a type of a string required true and minimum of six it's a, it, of course the description is usually longer than the title then image url is going to be type of a string and required is going to be set to true then i'm going to have category which is again a type of a string required come on string required true and here enum so before typing the enum and if you don't know i want to explain to you my friend so enum means that the category can only be certain strings so here i'm going to write an array of five elements so here i have nature and here i'm just going to copy paste it and then write it here so mountain so here mountain ocean well wild life and then forest so the category must be one of those five strings it cannot be something else it cannot be the something whatever it must be only those c uh, five things that they have written here this is what enum means and then uh let me write here comma and let me write here the author id which means the person who created that block and it's going to be a type of mongoose dot schema dot types dot object id and here the ref is going to be to user then i'm going to have here likes which is going to be the same here so type is going to be mongoose oops dot schema dot types dot object id like this and here again ref set to user and here time stamps is set to true and let me export it so export default mongoose question mark dot models question mark dot block 
And if we don't have it, we are going to create it. So here block and here block schema. Okay, we are ready with the block schema. The last uh, schema that we have to write, the last module is the comment. So let me go here just to the comment.js and let go. So here import mongoose from mongoose. Then const comment schema is equal to new mongoose.schema and here it is block id so here the id of the block of course every single comment is connected to its block then type is again mongoose.types dot uh with mongoose.schema dot types dot object at i know guys it's quite lengthy uh, and here the ref is this time to block not to the user and of course required is set to true then here author id is going to be just the same i'm just going to copy it this time and here the ref is just to the user it's not to the block it's to the user this is the only difference and the last part is the text of the comment itself so here text oops come on text a type of a string and required is set to true and here i'm going to write the object which is with the timestamps key value pair timestamp set to true and again export default mongoose question mark dot models question mark dot comment and here again if we have not if we don't haven't created it we're going to create so mongoose dot model is going to be comment and then comment schema okay guys so we are ready with the models let's go again to the register finally we can start typing the code here okay so uh wait just a second and let's go so here you remember before next 13 how we have written the api so it was ex export async default come on default function handler request response and here just let me move the async like this and here it was switch request dot method and here you write for case post and you remember you remember remember but forget everything it's a little bit different this time here so and another thing ju i ju just wanted to show that it's different before you remember we just did return response status of 200 or whatever it is and here json and something but right now we don't get the uh, response like this we return it with the new response like this and here you write json.stringify something and let's say you want status you have an object here status and here let's say 200 so this is a little bit different i know okay and let me show you a concrete example of everything that i to talk right now so here it is export async function and if you want it to be let's say a get request here it must be capital letters get the same applies for post put and delete but right now we're creating a register so it's a post request as you may know and here we take the request as i told you just like this here and here a try catch so here a try catch and here let me just write the code for the cache block first return new response json.stringify error.message and here status of 500 and here for the try i first want to connect to our database so here db.connect then const username email password and here the password i want to rename it to pass this is what the syntax means and here await request.json this is something different here i i don't remember using it prior to next 13 i may use it i'm not exactly sure but this is you know this is not in node.js for sure uh, okay then after this const is existing is going to be equal to await user.find one and here email and here if if that is true this means that we need to return or just throw new error so here throw new error and it's going to be here user already exists then const hashed password is equal to await bcrypt dot hash and here the first value as you know is the password itself so i just pass and then here i pass the salt to 10 okay and here const new user is equal to await user dot create here and we have the username email and password is set to hashed password okay and then 
we return the user like we saw here. We get the password away from the object and we return everything else. So here, just user like this. And it's from user dot underscore dog. So dot underscore dog is literally getting the values of the user. If we don't have the dot underscore dog, you can just console lock it yourself to see it have a lot of things that are from mongoose themselves. And I just want to have the values. That's why you need to write like this and it is new user actually. So new user dot underscore doc. And I can delete this comment here and let me continue. So we just return new response json dot stringify and here user and then status of 21 which means successfully created so i can go to my postman and then let me try the register so it's come on postman so here it is api register a post request here as i told you let me delete all of this here or can i can just use this so here just test user one two three and the same for the email and let me click on send so right now sending request nothing happens let me see what is the problem so here the, let me see and here we encounter one error that uh, is very easy to fix so here error the top level await experiment is not enabled so in order to fix this error uh, I have encountered that error previously so here let me go, ju just go to next.config.js so here this file here and just let me copy everything here so let me copy it and let me paste it again inside the next.config so just like this oops uh, let me go back to the latin alphabet and uh, let me try it right now so right now it should work why is the, why it's not working here next.config ah uh yes here i had a typo and it stopped the server right now it's going to work so let me click on send let me click again come on why it's not working ah user already exists ah it just let me make a new user for you to show that it or that it works yes so you see here the username the email the user id and we don't get the password back and we have that created at and updated at which i told you we're going to have because of the timestamps set to true this object here so we know the register is working as you probably saw it okay and i suggest to you that we go then to the block here to the block folder and here i'm going to leave the out for last because here we're going to use one library and here for the block let me just start with the normal url so the not the dynamic one but the normal one okay and here import db from libdb then import verify token from add sign libjwt and we're going to get the function we're going to create it just uh, in a second and here import block from models block and here we're going to have uh, get and the post so here export async function get with the request inside and then let me just copy it because we are going to have as i told you a post so here this is going to be for getting all of the post uh, the block i mean so here just let me again write the code for the cache block so here return new response not with without a dot so here parentheses json dot stringify no and here again an object with the status key and here 500 okay and here for the try is super simple literally two lines of code const blocks are equal to await block dot find and here i'm going to just set a limit of 16 if we have a lot of blocks and then dot populate is going to populate the author id instead of an id is going to show the actual user and then return new response json.stringify blocks and here status of 200 very easy then for the post this is for creating it let me show you how we're going to do it so here await db.connect and before continuing continuing i want to go to my again to my github and here to the jwt i'm going to copy those functions but i'm going to explain to you how they're going to work so here inside the lib jwt dot js and here let me paste it so here 
this is the function for I'm going to even write as a comment on here for creating JWT or signing is more of an accurate term and here verifying verify verify come on verifying token JWT token okay so here we get the secret for our, our environmental variable which we are going to create just now and here this is the payload and then we return the payload so here let me go to my env and here let's write jwt underscore secret and here i'm going to write some easy secret of course in a real application in production you want a super complex secret that is Im almost impossible or impossible practically to guess and here uh, you see, I mean, they are not hard functions here. We will get the secret, we sign it, we return it here. We get the secret, we verify it, and we return the, the payload which we have put here. So, you see, it's not something hard with sign JWT token and verify JWT token. Okay, and here, uh, const access token is going to be equal to request.headers.get authorization. And as you remember, I'm going to show in node dot js it was request dot headers dot authorization but here you see how it's a little bit different then uh, const token is going to be equal to access token dot split we're going to split it by a space and we get the first why we do it because it's a better a space and the token itself here so we we split it by a space and we get an array of two elements and when we go for the first index this means the second element so we get the token itself without the bearer and without the space so this is what it does and then we do the const we do the functions so here decoded come on decoded token is equal to verify jwt and here we have the token so right now if the access token is a false value this means that it doesn't exist it's an empty or something and then if the decoded token is false value as well we return new response in here json.stringify come on json.stringify an object with the error here and an authorized wrong or expired token and then we return we have uh, here the status which is going to be 403 nice and here if we have passed this condition this means that our token is perfectly valid we have a try catch here and then return new response json.stringify no and here status of 500 and here inside the try we get the body which is just a wait request.json then const new block is equal to await block.create just the body and then we return new response of json.stringify new block and here status of 201 this is for our block route you see and here for the id of course we are going to have the for the id here just let me close it here and here inside the id let me create it so here again i'm going to import the db then i'm going to import again the verify jwt token import block from modules block and here import user like this and here we're going to have a get put and delete so here export async function get and here with the request i'm just going to copy paste it two more times so here it is put and here it is delete as i told you so here for the get again await db.connect and here whoops come on a try catch and here it is return new response json.stringify no then status of 500 and here for the try block it's going to be const block is equal to await dot block dot find by id here we use the id and right now you probably wonder how do we get the id it's going to be like this so here it's an object so we're going to restructure it and it having params and then inside it is going to have an id but if you find this syntax too confusing we can just do it like this so here 
is equal to ctx.params.id and here I'm just going to name this ctx it's basically the same guys I'm just going to make it like this so you don't get confused if you don't know the syntax and then dot .populate is going to be here author id and here dot .select with minus password and then return new response is going to be json.stringify oh, json.stringify block and here status of 200 and this is for the get then for the put request is going to be for when we want to update it so it's going to be interesting so uh, await db.connect then const access token we do the same thing we get the token and we verify it request.headers.get authorization and here const token is equal to access token dot split again we split it to make it an array and we get the first element the first uh, index which is the second element and here const decoded token is equal to verify jwt token and here we have the token and here we make a condition if this if access token is a false value or the decoded token is a false value here we return new response of I'm just going to copy this specific response because I don't want to write it again so here this thing here so return new response json dot stringify error unauthorized strong or smart token with the status of 403 okay and then let's make the try catch here so here try catch just the code for the cache block is the same as the, the get request here so we can just copy it freely and here const body is equal to a to await request.json and here const block is equal to await block dot find by id so here the id and dot populate is going to be here author id and of course the id we're going to get it the same as the is the, the same so here ctx.params.id and here we get the ctx and then if block dot author id dot underscore id to string because it can be an object id and it's not a string and it's going to just write to string them this method and if it's not equal to the decoded token dot id again to string then this means that it's not the author that is wanting to update the block so we are going to return new response of json dot stringify and here message is going to be only author can update his block and here we have the status again 403 oops 403 otherwise this means the person that wants to update the block is actually the author of this block so here we do const updated block is equal to await block dot find by id and update and here the first parameter as you know is the id then set in the, the, the just the body it's not the request dot body and here new is set to true because if we don't have this new to true we are still going to update it but it's going to return the version before it was updated that's why i write it every single time with the new set to true and then return new response json dot stringify here updated block and here the status of 200 okay we are ready with the update then we have the delete so here again await db.connect then i have const access token is equal to request.headers.get here authorization so here authorization then const token is, is equal to access token dot split again we split it by the space like the previous times we get the second element or the first index then const decoded token is equal to verify jwt token the token and here again we make the condition here i can just copy paste it here uh, to avoid writing it again then if we have passed this condition this means that we are actually the owner of the pod so here try catch again i'm going to copy the code for the cache block and here for the try is going to be a little bit different so const block is equal to await block on block dot find find by id and here dot populate outer dot id and here 
we still check the we still make the same condition so again i'm going to copy paste it and here the message different can delete his block so if we just check if the user is actually the author of the block and if it is not well, of course we return new response this thing here otherwise it is we do the same the following code so block dot find by by id and delete we write the id just like this and of course the id just let me get the id so here ctx and then const id is equal to ctx dot params dot id and then we return new response come on new response json dot stringify here message success fully deleted block and here status of 200 okay we are ready with this part and for the block we have one last thing to do which is when we like the block so here inside the ID we are going to nest it a little bit more we have like folder so inside block inside ID inside like so here I'm just going to even write it at the bottom here of the file block ID like and then an outdoor JS this is how we're going to do it so you don't get confused and the URL is going to be as you probably guessed so here HTTP localhost 300 3000 slash API slash block slash some ID slash like this is the URL I know it's kind it, it is kind of confusing if you if you're new to Next.js 13 but yeah just I'm going to leave it actually just make the comment here and here let me go to the this route.js here so inside the like so here route.js and here let me start typing here the code okay so here import db again then import verify token gwt token and then import the block model and let's continue here we are going to have only one function which is a put request so here ex export async function put we get the request again a try catch here return new response of let's say json.stringify again no and here status 200 and before the try block here i want to connect to our database then const access token is equal to request.headers dot auto dot get actually authorization const token is equal to access token dot split again we split it by the space and we get the second element or the first index is the same const decoded token is equal to verify JWT token and we pass the token and again we make we write the same condition I can just copy paste it because I don't want to write it for the fifth time probably uh, not this condition but actually yes this condition my bad like this nice and then I want to get the ID of course before continuing because we are going to need it so here const ID is equal to ctx.params.id here it's ctx actually let's go so here inside the try block here const block is equal to await block dot find by id here and we pass the id then if if block dot likes dot includes decoded token dot underscore id here we make the if and then the else so for the if oops i want to do it like this so here block dot likes is equal to block dot likes dot filter here we get the the id like this and then on the arrow function so if id to string is not equal to the decoded token dot id to string so this means that if our id inside is inside the likes array we are going to remove it otherwise we are going to add it if it's not there so we basically toggle the like and here decoded token dot id and the last part here is to write the block save and then to return the response so here return new response json dot come on json dot stringify here the message successfully interacted with the block i can write here i can write here like and dislike but i just i don't know i just want to leave it like this and here status of 200 okay so we are ready with a uh, dislike functionality then let me head into the comments so here inside the comment just let me delete those files and here inside the comment i'm going to have here around.js here 
So inside our router.js, let's start. So here import db from libdb and here import verify JWT token and here import comment model from models comment here. And let's start. So here export async function post and here request inside and here await db.connect again const access token is equal I'm just going to copy paste it again this time because I don't want to write it for if I don't remember which time already. So here I can just copy and paste like this. Okay. And then after this, we're going to have a try catch and here inside the catch return new response of JSON of stringify no and again status of 500. And inside the try block here, const body is equal to await request.json. Here, let new comment is going to be equal to await comment.create and here body. And then new comment is equal to await new comment.populate authorize because I want to populate it. And then return new response is going to be json.stringify new comment. And here status is 201 because you know successfully created is 201. And this is it for creating a uh, comment is particularly easy if you ask me. Then the next part is to make a here a nested route with a dynamic ID, which is for get and which is only for get actually. So and delete, of course. Uh, here you see again inside the comment we have the ID, and again here we make a route.js here. Again, import db from libdb, then import verify jwt token and again import comment from comment we have the same imports as the other route and here export async function get with a request here and then let me copy it paste it here we have it for the delete so for the get just let me get here the ctx come on ctx and here await db.connect const id is equal to ctx.params.id and here for the try catch just let me here copy the code from the catch block you know, return response of JSON string if I know, and status of 500. Okay, and here, const comments is equal to, and this is here, block ID, this ID specifically. And here, await comment dot find, and here, block ID with the ID like this, and then dot populate author ID. And here, return new response of JSON dot stringify comments and then status of 200 just like this and here we have the last function for our comments here which is the delete one so here again i'm just going to copy and to go to my file here and copy this logic here because i seriously don't want to write it for every single function you see just to verify the token itself nice and here of course i want to get the ctx for the id here and let's continue here so here a try catch just let me copy the code from the catch block like this and here for the try inside let me write it so here const comment is equal to wait comment dot find by id here id and then of course populate author dot id then if comment dot author id dot underscore id dot to string it's not equal to the recorded token dot id dot to string and this means that it's not the author of that token so uh not token but comment so he cannot delete it so here return new response is going to be json dot stringify here object with a message inside only author can delete his block and here status of 401 then await comment dot find by id and delete so it is here and we pass the id and here return new response of json dot string here message successfully deleted comment and here status of 200 okay so we are ready with every single api route except one which is the old which is arguably the most important because we cannot use the other routes without the old here so for the old, it's going to be a little bit different because we're going to use the next old library. So here, let's make a new folder inside the old, which is with the following syntax. Write it like I do. So here, dot, dot, dot. 
next out, so here next out, dot dot dot, next out inside square brackets like this and inside of course you make the route, so here inside this route dot jsql and this specifically okay i'm go going to write it by hand here so specifically for you it's going to be quite long so here import next out from next out like this and here it's not from next just like this then import credentials credentials provider from next out slash provider slash credentials credentials import user from models user import sign jwt token from lib jwt and here import bcrypt bcrypt from come on from bcrypt and here we're going to have const handler which is going to be next thought here and here we're going to have an object inside so here providers we're going to write like this so here it's, it's an array and here credentials credentials provider I'm, I'm going to try to explain this part here as i could so here we're going to write credentials provider and here again parentheses an object inside and here it's a type of credentials and later i'm going to to tell you why it's like this the type of credentials specifically and here we have credentials which is our v inputs so here it's username which is a label of username it is a type of a type of a te come on type of a text and then it's placeholder it's, it's not that important the placeholder but we're going to write let's say john smith or john doe okay and then we have a password which is password then label is going to be label password come on password it's the type of a password just like this here okay then we have the async authorize function which is taking the credentials and the request so this is the functions the function that we are going to call when you want to sign this to login that's why i have a different api route for register this is for specifically for login so here we get the email and the password and it's here label email not username is equal to credential so here we just destructure the object and we get the email and the password and here const user is equal to await user dot find one and here we search it by the email so if there is no such user this means that he had not logged in uh, he had not registered previously so we just throw new error invalid input then const compare pass is equal to await bcrypt dot compare password the first value which is the normal password so we have two parameters that we need to, to pass here so two parameters the first one so here first one is normal password so let's say one two three one two three and then the second is hashed password which is from the database which is that weird password that you have probably seen the hashed version it's very weird looking and then uh, as i told the second is user.password which is the hashed version of the password and here if compare password is a false value we're going to throw new error invalid input otherwise here i'm going to have a nails condition it's going to be again we are going to password dot 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 current user is equal to user dot underscore doc and then const access token is equal to sign jwt token current user expires in six days and then we return here we must return an object so here we're going to take this so here current user and the access token like this here okay so this is let's say this here authorizes the login function this here specifies what field and this is when we're going to call it so here i'm going to show when we make the login this for this thing specifically okay so here this is the providers then here i have pages which is the sign in so when we want to log in we're going to call one specific function from our library uh yes from our library and it's going to navigate us to the login page this is it just for the pages and here we have callbacks so here for the callbacks async jwt here token user and here if we have a user token dot access token is equal to user dot access token and 
I probably didn't make, uh, didn't explain the next thought that great. So I suggest to you that if you don't understand it, if you have not read the documentation, go read the documentation. Of the, the documentation is going to explain the next out the best. At least in my opinion, I have read the documentation. It is very clear. Okay, let me continue. So here, token dot id is equal to user dot id. So here. We do it and then we return the token. And here I'm going to have another function, which is async session, which is going to be called when we have when we call the U session hook. So here what we're going to have inside the U session hook. So here if the token is true value, session dot user dot underscore id is equal to token dot underscore id and session dot user dot access token is equal to user dot access token. And here it's token, not user, my bad. And of course here we return the session. And here export, export handler as get, handler as post. So I suggest to my friends that you read the documentation if you want to understand this, everything here inside the, this file as best as you can possibly. Okay, so we are ready with, uh, with the login, with the register and all of this API stuff. So, let's create the login page so here i'm going to show you how you can create a page so just let me close here that route.js and here inside the app folder make a new folder and it's going to be called login right now and you see here just let me close the api folder and inside you need you must write it with the page.jsx so this is how you write pages in uh next.js 13 you must write here a folder and inside a page.jsx it must be like this, I repeat for the third time. So here we have RFCE, and here I want to rename it to login. And here, let me start with the uh, JSX first. So here it's class, name is going to be classes.container. Whoops, whoop, I have not created a CSS. So here, login.module.css, let me import it again. So import classes from here dot slash. Oops, not the, so here, like this, and here dot container. Then I'm going to have classes dot wrapper, and then I'm going to have an H2 with login text inside. Below the H2, I'm going to have a form, and here just a normal JSX form, and it's going to have here input with a type of an email. A uh, place hold, come on, placeholder is going to be email dot dot dot. Change is going to be here set email to e.target.value and then I'm just going to copy this input here it's password password set password this is the only difference so here we are ready with the inputs then we have button dot classes dot here it's submit button the class name and here it's log in and then below that button here I'm going to have a link here so again from next link and it's going to have a class name of classes dot login now and the href is going to be here come on href is going to be to the our register page so here we can toggle between the register and the login and here don't have an account question mark and here we we make it on a new line register now with a dot here and below this div here I want to have here a toast container. So this is for our, from our library to have notifications. So here from toast container and just let me write here, we need to import the CSS from this library. This is just the library for notifications. Don't worry, uh, react toast, come on, react toastify.css, okay. And let me start typing here the state and the function. So here is going to be email set email is equal to use state and empty string initially then const password set password is again an empty string initially so here like this and then const router is equal to use router and here it must be not from next slash router but from next navigation change it here next navigation okay and here we need to have an sub on submit here so here on submit handle submit and let me declare this function here it's a typical login page it has nothing special so here 
and also mid is equal to async we take the event so here event dot prevent default to prevent the default behavior of form submitting which is refreshing the page uh, okay so let me go here the top level oh, wait what i think we have fixed that thing uh, earlier so just let me refresh ah here okay here we have nothing so it was just an old uh, bug let me click on the login here ah right now i'm i'm sure i i I know that it doesn't work and I can show you why and we can fix it instantly why we cannot navigate so here it's inside the navbar and here uh, let me go here and here to inside the navbar here this button here where I'm going to show you how you can run two functions inside this button so here we have an arrow function and we wrap this function here with curly braces like this and we call it with the parentheses like this but of course I want to call another function that's why I've done all of this thing here is the sign out function and this function comes I'm just going to import it here so the sign out function it's the sign in my bad so here import sign in which is from come on sign in from next out react this is from that library here it's a space it's a function that is from the library I have not written it it's from the library I repeat so here it's sign in and we call the function so right now it's going to navigate us whoops come on sign in and it's not going to navigate us to that login page when I click here just let me refresh and here why it's not working let me check ah here it's on the logout my bad just let me copy it and paste it here on the you know, and paste it here just let me remove this because I don't need it inside the login and here it's sign out for the logout it's a different function so let me again import it sorry if i confused you so here it's the sign out and here the sign in so right now i want to show you how how it's working so here when i click again i need to refresh what is happening ah you are importing a component uh that you state it only works in grand component uh i think i have marked it ah uh, the login page doesn't have the use client that's why i get an error so <laughs> right now if i write it okay let me go back here let me click on login and right now we need to be redirected so you see right now we are on the login page and we are redirected to the login page from this function because here inside uh, the, where it is the api out here i have specified the sign in to be to be to the login page that's how it works so this is so this is one of the things that i can explain you right away so this is why here we are on the login page let me close this here and let's finish our handle submit here so for the handle submit i'm going to uh have a try catch here so here and actually before uh, doing the try catch here i can just do the if the password is empty or the email is empty here i can toast.error fill all fields is going to give us notification and here i need to import that toast and here of course we're going to stop the execution of the function here I, i'm going to have another if so here if the password.length is less than six i'm going to again do this so here few all fields but instead of actually instead of few all fields uh password must be at least six characters long okay and right now let me just write the catch here so console.log error dot message or just error and right now let me write finally the logic here so here const response is equal to await sign in so let me again import this function so here import sign in uh, from next out react and here import sign in here credentials and here we're going to pass email password and redirect false just like this and then if response dot error is equal to no so here let's just let me put a question mark here so if this is equal to no this means that our login has been successful so i want to go to my home page of course we want to go to the home page back when we have a successful login else here i'm going to have toast.error error occurred while logging 
Okay, so here I made one user earlier, which is the test user. I'm just going to copy him like this and one, two, three, one, two, three, and try to log in item. I want to see what is going to show. Okay, so I'm this is the correct functionality. I want to show you the other scenario. Let's say the password is wrong. So instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, I put a bonus character, so another one. And when I click on login, error occurred while logging. So, okay, the login functionality works exactly as I want it to work. But I want to change here the URL with a logged in. So here, oops, I'm going to go to my uh, navbar again. And here, how we're going to do it, the, I'm going to show you the following way. So here, we get the use session. So just let me see from where I need to import it. So import use session is from this again. So here, use session. And here we get the data, but I'm going to name it to session. So here we get the session constant. And here, instead of here having this logged in, I'm going to have session question mark dot user. So right now, let me see. Uh, must be wrapped. Ah, I forgot this thing here. So this is under the hood React context. So of course, we need to wrap our whole application with it. So let me go here to the layout.js. So here, layout.js. And let me do it. So here session provider and we're going to wrap our application with the session and here session and we get this session just from here directly and let me import it so here import session provider from next out react like this here so right now session provider is undefined ah because of course we need to use client here to write it and right now okay you see everything is working and let me get back to this condition so this is if it's a success uh, th this means that if you are logged in this means that we are not logged in so right now let me refresh the page and right now let me try to log in here so again test user one two three four at gmail.com one two three one two three let me click login and you see here the this image here and when i click here you see the drop down and when I click on log out, I need to be logged out. And you see here it works because of this function here. Just let me show you this here. Uh, not the sign in, but the sign out. So we know that this here is working as we wanted here, the login. Let me go just to write the CSS for our login because of course we want to make our page look nice. So here where it was here, the login dot .css. Let me split the screen. And let me start typing it so here dot container just let me move it to see so i think like this nice so here dot container margin top of five irm height calc 100 vh minus six pixel and width of 100 percent then dot wrapper is going to be here width of 85 percent margin of zero auto then display of flex flex direction of column and align items of center then dot wrapper in the h2 the title inside the dot wrapper is going to have font size of 32 pixel color of 2 to 2 and letter spacing of 1 pixel then dot wrapper in the form inside is going to have margin top of 2 irm then width of 20 per 20 percentage padding of 1.5 irm then border is one pixel solid 666 then border radius of 8 8 pixel display of flex flex direction of column justify content of center align items of center and gap of 2 irm then dot wrapper in the form and the input design is going to have outline of none border of none border bottom of one pixel solid 666 and padding of 0 0.5 irm then dot submit button is going to have outline none panic of 0 0.5 item on top and bottom and one item on left and right then border is one pixel solid transparent come on transparent font size of 17 pixel font weight of both background color is going to be ef 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 then Cover is going to be 2 2 A B 2 2, which is a green green cover. Cursor is going to be pointer. Transition is 150 milliseconds. And here, letter spacing of 0.5 pixel. 
Just let me see how it's looking. Uh, login and here. Why it's, why I don't see anything here? It. I think I have imported it. Guys, don't touch anything. I just restarted the server and it works. It was just some bug. Just restarted the server and it works. And I saw here a warning. Here we have no secret for the next toad. So here I'm just going to go to my GitHub. And here I'm just going to copy those two environmental variables and paste them. Come on. Here. Just like this, we have we need a next old secret and next old URL. Like this. Let me close the .mv. And let me continue with the CSS. So here I want to write the uh, hover effect for the submit button. So here hover. And then border color of 2, 2, two a b to 2. Background color is the same greenish color. And then color of ef ef ef. Then dot login now is going to be background color of transparent. Then outline is going to be here none. Border is going to be done, font size of 18 pixel, margin top of 1.75 IRM, cursor is going to be pointer, text align is going to be center, and transition is going to be 150 milliseconds. And here, just for the hover effect, so here, login now, hover, I'm going to change the color to color 555, just a little a slight color change. So let me close my GitHub here. And let me again try to log in. So here. And again, I'm going to try with the wrong credential. So here we need to see an error. What is happening here? Why I don't? Wait, I'm just going to refresh the page to see right now to log in. So here, test user1234 gmail.com. One, two, three, one, two, three. So here, why this doesn't work? Again, I didn't change anything. And it's working. So here I clicked several times login, and here the notification is going to show off just in a second. Here, let me see on the console what I have. Some class name. Okay, you see here, error occurred while login is just delayed. It's working. I didn't change anything. Let me again try to log in with my correct credential. So here you can log in. And again, it's going to take several seconds to process here the API call. And if it's a success, we are redirected to the home page. So let me wait. Error occurred while logging. What is the error? I tried to log in with correct credentials here. Operations. Users find one buffered time out. My friends, the error is just something that I forgot to write one line of code. Await tb.connect. Of course, we need to be connected to the database when you make a request to the database. Like it makes sense. So I just forgot it somehow. Just let me try again to log in. So here it is user1234 at gmail.com. So let me try again a wrong password. So click login and here you see instantly a notification. Let me try with the correct password here. You see here I am logged in. So this is working successfully. Okay, we are ready here with the login page then. While we are at authentication stuff, let me make the register page. So here, let me go uh, to my here to the we just let me close the API and here let me make register and again page.jsx and here register.module.css. So let me close it here again RFC register and it's going to be quite similar to our login. I'm going to write it again from the zero to not confuse you with any copy and stuff. So let me write it right now. Okay, so here class name is going to be just let me import the classes from dot slash. And here classes dot container. Then here I have classes dot wrapper. And here again I have an H2 with register text inside. Here a form with a text here of type of text. Placeholder is going to be here username dot dot dot. And here on change is going to be here again. We track the state. So here set username of e dot target dot value. Let me copy paste it two more times. So here it's an email, placeholder email, and set email here. Here it is password, password, and set password. And below here we have, of course, the submit button. So here button.classes.submit button, and here it is register. And below here, 
I have another button, so here it's class name of classes dot register register now and here on click is going to be this function so this sign in function come on i need to import it so here import sign in from next out come on next out slash react so here this function and here don't have an account question mark here br tag to uh, make it on two lines on a new line here so here register now dot and below here of course i want the toast container so i can copy this toast thing here from uh, login page so here the css and the toast container just to not forget something and uh, we are ready with the jsx but of course we need to track the state here so here const username set username is equal to use state here empty string then const email set email is equal to use state an empty string and here const password set password is again equal to an empty string as you've probably guessed then i want to write this as a use client because of course we have state and stuff so here it's use client and here let me make the on submit here so it is handle submit const handle submit is equal to async it takes the event here try catch console log error and here we have event.prevent default then if come on what is this thing that i have imported uh if username is equal to an empty string or email is equal to an empty string or password is equal to an empty string come what i've done here come on so here password empty string we have the toast.error fill all fields and then we of course return then I check if password.linked is less than six characters. Come on, less than six characters. Toast.error password must be at least six characters. And then return. Okay, and here inside the try block right now, we're going to write the important code. So here const response is equal to await fetch. Here HTTP, come on, HTTP, localhost. 3000 slash api slash register and here headers is going to be content type application slash json then it's going to be a method of post method and then the body is going to be json.stringify here username email and password so then we make if request dot okay this means that it's a success we have toast dot success here successfully registered the user set timeout and here set timeout is going to be here to redirect us back to the sign in page so here after a second and a half just for you to see the message and read it and here return we stop the function and we are done else toast dot error error occurred while registering and here return so we can go to our register page just let me log out here register and let me make here new user new user at gmail.com and here one to one to three one come on one to three one to three and here i can even console log the response for you to see what is happening here so await response.json console here just let me remove all of the messages and then we click on register so here you see successfully registered the new user we are redirected so it's a success right uh okay and let me try to register again with the same user so i want to have the error displayed in my face to know that i'm wrong so here register and let me see error occurred while registering so it is working as i want it to work and uh, let me just go and try the css i can actually copy the css from our login so here just go to login.mojo.css and paste it inside the register it is basically the same thing so you see how it is working here this is the only difference here so right now we're going to write here for the button uh, so instead of login now it is register now so right now you see how it's working so here i can toggle in and out from login to register and you see how it is working okay so let me right now login again 
with the new user at gmail.com 123 123 so i want to be logged in right now okay so we are ready with the apis we are ready with the login and the register page so we are getting to into the interesting part the next page that we are going to create is for creating the block so here again just let me close everything let me close here the terminal here let me close this in here inside the app folder let me create let me create create block and here again page dot jsx rfc and then just create block dot module dot css like this and here let me import the css the styling sheets like oops not the page like this okay and here is going to be create block so right now we can start creating it nice okay let me first actually write the jsx so here is going to be class name is going to be classes.container and here classes.wrapper then here i'm going to have an h2 with the create post and below i'm going to have here a form which is going to have here an input first with a type of a text placeholder is going to be here title dot 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 on change is going to be here we take the event and here set title to the event dot target dot value then text area here it's for the for the description so here placeholder description dot 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 and here it's a self-closing tag so here i can just delete it like this and make the self-closing tag as you see and here on change again it's taking the event here and here set description is going to be e dot target dot value after the text area here we have the select so we have a value of category so i want here to have a default value value of category and here on change is going to be on takes the event here takes the event set category is e dot target dot value okay and here inside the select here i'm going to have five options so here option multiplied by five and here nature nature then here it's going to be mountain and here it's going to be mountain as well then ocean come on ocean ocean then wild life wild life and here forest forest so here this is for the select and the options below here i'm going to have label with the html4 of image and here i'm going to have the text of upload image ai outline file image so here import ai outline file image from react icons ai and below it i'm going to give an input with the type of file this time the type of a file ig is going to be image they must be the same i repeat this the value inside the html4 must be the same as the id here they must be the same because i'm going to make this display none i don't want to see it but i want to use its functionality how we're going to use it because of this html4 when you click this it's going to be clicked like this i'm going to show you right now and here on change is going to be take the event in here set photo E dot target dot files and we get the first element so just we just get the image that's how we get the image and here below i want of course the toast container again so i'm just going for the toast container i just want to copy the, the toast container and the css just, just we don't forget anything here you see just a toast container and the css nothing else i have copied okay so let me make it a use client because we're going to use some states use client and let me write the state and we're going to see how it looks so here comes title set title is equal to use state here, come on use state here an empty string then const description set description is equal to use state come on tell me in the comments if i write too fast guys i write on the keyboard pro for probably 15 years so that's why i type so fast uh then const category set category is equal to use state again an empty this time it's not an empty string actually it's nature like this i wanted to have a default something as a default value 
and then the next state come on the next state here is const photo set photo is equal to use state again an empty string and let me see do i have other states that i need to declare i don't okay and then here i want to get the the session so i want to to know if i'm logged in or not here use session i'm just going to import it right now we get the status as well so we know if we are authenticated or not and here const router is equal to use a router so again from next navigation this time it's auto imported from next navigation you don't need to change anything uh so here i need to import the use session from next out react like this here and here if status is equal to loading come on return loading dot 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 then if status is equal to unauthenticated return access denied so we must be locked in in order to access this page quite logically because we are going to create some data and here access denied and then here i'm just going to create the on submit which is handle submit so let me create the handle submit is equal to async function like this event dot prevent default and i have another function inside this file which i'm going to create which is const upload image you know we are going to have images so we need to upload it and it's just an async function without any parameters so as i told you earlier we are going to use cloudinary for image uploading so let's go to cloudinary and show you how you can configure it i'm going to spoil it to you right now it's going to be very easy it's going to take us probably five minutes at most so here my friends you see we are inside cloudinary.com here sign up for free if you haven't signed up previously but i have so here i'm going to click on login here i'm going to log in with my google account so here let me click let me click here and here we have getting started i want to click to go here to the dashboard and from those values all of the values here i'm going to need here just this value so here let me go to my vs code and here let me make here other constant so here const cloud underscore name and here let me paste it the other value that we're going to need because we need two values this is the first one the other value is a little bit more interesting so here it was here inside settings here upload and here where were you uh, at upload preset here this thing here and here you need to make the sign in mode unsigned this is a very important part and here let me make the my underscore blog project web dev mania and here let me save it so here it is saved and here i have a previous my upload so i'm just going to delete this one this is for pre previous thing that i have done and right now this thing here we need to get that value here so here my blog project web dev mania so here it's going to be a const upload preset and let me paste the value here as it is okay then uh, let me start typing the upload image so here first we check if we have the photo so here if the photo ex doesn't exist we just return what we just return what we need to do what else we are going to do then const form data we must have a form data here so here const new form data and here form data dot append is going to be file and here we paste the photo itself just directly the photo and here form data dot append here we're going to have upload underscore preset and here it is the upload underscore preset that constant that we have declared then a try cache block here with a console error console lock error and here for the try block i'm going to write the following code so const response await fetch and here just watch what i type here you can copy inside the github if you feel confused so here https colon slash slash api dot cloudinary cloudinary dot com slash v1 underscore one slash dollar sign and curly places 
uh, what was that variable crowd name then slash image slash upload and here it is and here we provide the object so here method is going to be of course a post request and here the body is just the form data we pass it like this and then const data is equal to await response.json and then const image url is equal to data secure underscore url and then return image url this is the function so we run the function and we get back the image url which we are going to save inside the database so inside our database we don't save the image directly we save the link that that is a uh, connected to our image I, i'm not sure if the connected is a right term but you get the point we don't save the image itself we save the link that points to the image i wanted to use that word points to that those words i mean okay so we are ready with this let me go back to the handle submit and let me make here a try catch so here actually before the try catch i can just do it like this so here if the photo is a false value or the title is a false value you, or you, you can do to check if uh, they are empty it's basically empty or this is the same thing and here for the description as well so toast.error here all fields are required then return and here we have the we get the image URL because we are going to run the upload image function just like this here then const response is equal to await fetch here HTTP localhost 3000 slash api slash block come in block then headers and here inside the headers what we're going to have here content type application slash json come on json and here authorization is going to be better session question mark dot user question mark dot access token i just want to log in this session variable to to show you what it is composed of what things it have inside so here i going to console log it go to the create here this page cannot be found ah because here i have named it create block not post my bot i'm just going to name it to create where were you create block so right now i'm just going to go back here come on like this and here create okay so right now we are here and i want to see in the console log what is this session object composed of so this is it so here it have expires and user and inside this user it has the id the email and the access token so this is the access token this is the jwt token you see how long it is this is basically for and then as you remember inside our api we verify the token if it's actually valid and if it's equal to our user and that's how we do all of this stuff here okay let me go back here uh, not enough bar back here page.jsec so here let me delete this console log and here if response is not okay so here if you have an error throw a new error error occurred otherwise we get the block from the response so await response.json and here router dot push here so here block slash block question mark dot underscore id and here console log error so ah uh, here i forgot to write the method so it's here it's a post method and here of course we need to write the body i almost forgot the most important part so here json dot stringify title description category image URL and here auto ID is from session question mark dot user question mark dot ID okay so right now we can try to create a new block here even though we have not written the CSS it's still functional so we have no worries so here new block one two three new block one two three here let's say wildlife and upload image I'm just going to pick this burger I know it has nothing to do with wildlife and stuff but here I just don't see the button just let me create the button uh, and we are going to submit it so here after this form here we have the button with create here and here class name is going to be classes dot create post or block actually okay so right now if I click here we are going to be related to a page that doesn't exist okay it's a successful the page doesn't exist but you see here the block and the id here 
in to even verify it because you know you can trust but you need to verify uh, you need to you are we are going to see here you see here the block here the description and here i'm going to copy this url here so i just want to see the entire url copy it paste it and to see the image of this beautiful delicious burger so you know that everything works from the first try i am very glad that i have no errors okay so let me go back to the create block and right now i just want to create here uh, to write the css here okay so let me go back let me open the css let me split the screen and we know that it is functional and we can successfully create new blocks so here dot container is going to be margin top of 5 irm then height is going to be 100 vh minus 60 pixel then uh, width of 100 percent okay then the dot wrapper is going to be a width of 85 percent margin of zero auto zero auto then display of flex flex direction of column then align types of center then i'm going to again target the h2 so here the create post font size of 32 pixel color is of 222 and letter spacing is one pixel then the dot wrapper and the form inside the dot wrapper is going to be a margin top of 2 irm width of 20 percent padding of 0 point 1.5 not 0 but 1.5 irm border is one pixel solid 666 border radius is 8 pixel display of flex flex direction is going to be column uh, justify content of flex start align types of center and gap of 2 uh, rm then dot wrapper in the form in the input inside as well as so here comma and dot wrapper the form in the text come on text area inside are going to have the following styles so here outline is going to be none border is going to be none border bottom is going to be one pixel solid 666 padding of 0 0.4 irm entry size is going to be none nice then dot wrapper in the form and select inside is going to be outline none then border bottom of one pixel solid 666 padding of 0 0.4 irm resize is going to be none here font size of 18 pixel width of 180 pixel background color is going to be ef 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 and border radius of 8 pixel before continuing i want to see how we are right now okay it's almost ready we just need to write the button here okay this for the select then actually we need to write here the labels of form and the label inside which is this thing here so here it is width of one width of 175 pixel display of flex align terms of center gap of 1.25 irm font size of 18 pixel font weight of both and cursor is going to be pointer okay and here dot create block is going to be here margin top of 2.5 irm outline is going to be none border is one pixel solid transparent padding of 0.5 irm on top and bottom and 1.25 on left and right font size of 18 pixel border radius of 12 pixel background color is 22ab22 color is ef 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 cursor is going to be pointer and transition is 150 milliseconds then we apply the hover effect of this same button so here create block hover background color is white so again ef 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 border color is again this 22ab22 and the same as the text cover so 22ab22 and the last uh, style that i want to apply here is for this thing here for the access denied here so i can just make that on like this so you know what i'm doing so here access denied is going to be with a 100 percent text align is going to be center margin top of 5 irm font size of 32 pixel and font weight is going to be both here like this here so you see right now how it is uh what i want to do here oh, we are ready actually with the create block the next page which is a very important page is the block page itself so the block details so here again inside our app i want to create here a new folder block and here page.jsx rfc blog.module.css import classes classes from blog module.css okay 
in here actually wait 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 guys i'm going to read those two files sorry for this here inside the block folder i want to create another folder which is for the id and then i want to create the page.jsx here in the uh, block.module.css just like this here and here uh, i want to make it block details and here let me import classes from here dot slash block dot module dot css nice and here let me first start with the jsx so here it is class name is going to be equal to classes dot container then classes dot wrapper and here we have an image so here image from next image is going to be with the source here of block details question mark block details question mark dot image url but as you see here we need to first fetch the block details and then i'm going to write the jsx so for this specific component i'm going to first fetch the data so here use client of course because i'm going to need some use state and stuff okay so here const block details set block details is equal to use state an empty array um, no an empty array but an empty string initially and here let me make it so here use effect is going to be here like this and here async function fetch block and here const response is equal to await fetch http local calls 3000 slash api slash block and here the id how we're going to get the id very easily here we can just get it again like a ctx so here ctx and here context.params.id this is how we get it. it's the same as in the back end and here i don't want to store it so here cache no store then uh const block is equal to await response.json and then here set block details to block and then i have to do some things because we need to do for the likes and stuff to do likes but first i want just to fetch or actually i'm going to do it so here set is liked is going to be block dot likes dot includes session question mark dot user question mark dot underscore id set block likes to block dot likes dot link so this is basically here just i want to have some question mark here so this is basically to check if we have liked that block or if we haven't actually liked that block and of course in order to get access to this so here data session is equal to use session and i need to import it so import use session from next out slash react like this here okay and uh, to in order to run this function i need to, of course to have the session so here session and here fetch block like this here okay and i want to console log the block details just to see here that everything is okay so here block details let me check here uh those posts here are not dynamic here i'm just going to make the uh, to make them dynamic those are just some dummy data i just want to create some new posts here again with that burger picture and when i click here do i have any error or something ah no here i don't have any error or actually i do image with src ah i forgot here the width so for the image here the image inside the jsx its width here is going to be 750 pixel and height is going to be 650 pixel like this so right now come on loading what is the problem right now here i have an error set is liked it's not defined ah set is liked okay so here is liked set is liked is equal to use state here false value okay so this is how we fetch a block let me see here inside the inspect console and here object and you see here the author category created that description image url title updated that and its id we have <clears throat> we have everything here and i have no more errors i think let me refresh the page i do have uh it includes undefined so maybe probably i should do it like this 
and I have no more errors or do I? What is the problem here? Set block likes is not defined. Ah, const block likes set block likes is equal to u state. Let's say zero initially. So right now, okay, we have no more errors. Let's continue here. I have fetched the data. So here, let's continue. Below the image here, I'm going to have classes dot row, and inside the row first is an h3 with a class name of title. So here block details question mark dot title and here it's a question mark dot because initially this is going to be uh it's not going to exist i mean the block details is not going to be fetched instantly from the database it's going to take some milliseconds or a second or two seconds but it's not going to be instant instant so that's why you need to do this otherwise you're going to get an error okay and here if the block details question mark dot outer id question mark dot underscore to string if it's equal to the session question mark user question mark dot id again to string here we're going to show something so here like this and here like this so if this means that if we are the author of that block so if you are the author of the block here i'm going to show here controls which means edit and delete so here controls and here link of course to navigate us to the here it is going to be two blocks slash edit slash ctx params dot ig and here is going to be edit with a bs few pencil few this is the icon here so let me import it so import bs few pencil few from react icon slash bs and here I'm going to have class name is going to be classes dot edit button. Then below this link here, I'm going to have a button with the class name here of delete button. And here I'm going to have the text of delete and here, oops, AI view delete. I need to get this icon as well. So import AI view delete from react icons AI, just like this here. And here I'm going to apply an on click, which is handle delete i'm just going to declare it so that i don't have any errors so handle delete async like this here oops i forgot the arrow like this okay this means that we are the author of the page so we can edit and delete otherwise we're going to show just the name of the author so here it's going to be a diff with a class name here of classes dot author and here author is going to have a span here with the block details question mark dot author id question mark dot user name so right now field href ah here it must be href not to because i use react router doms link more often than the next one and i am accustomed to write with the two property so right now you see here the title and here because we are actually the the author of this block we see the edit and delete here which is great uh let me continue here so this was for this row here then uh below this div here you see below this div here i'm going to have another row which is classes dot row again and here i'm going to have category so here classes dot category category two dots and here a span which is going to have here block details question mark dot category and here below i'm going to have classes dot right and this is going to be the block likes again here some space and here is liked and here we're going to show different things because from depending on the condition so here ai view like and ai outline like oops here like and both of them are going to have here a size of 20 and an on click of just let me show you handle come on handle like i'm going to again declare this function beforehand to have no error so here const handle like async like this here okay and below this i'm going to have another row here below those two divs here so here classes dot row and here it's going to be first a paragraph here so here paragraph with the block details question mark dot description and below a span with posted and here 
format, which is a function that is from time ago. I just out imported it as you see here. Format in here block details question mark dot created at. This is it for that row. And then below be, be, below this last row here, I'm going to have classes dot comment section. And here I'm going to have classes dot comment input. And actually, I want to write the, the, the CSS and functions for everything. And then we're going to head on the comment section. This is like a bonus part, like the comment section. Let's first write the logic for the block itself. Then we're going to uh, make the comment section. So here, right now, I just see that I need to declare the router here. So here, const use router. Delete it here. And let me see how it's looking. AI outline like it's not defined. Of course, it's not defined. Let me import it here. AI outline like. And here you see a did delete category ocean. Here we have the like because the AI outline like because we have not yet liked it. Here we have the description and here posted eight minutes ago. Okay, I suggest to you that we write first the CSS because I want to make it look nice and then we're going to make the functionality of liking and the other stuff. So here dot container is min height of one of how 100 VH minus six pixel and here width of 100% then dot wrapper and of course I need to split the screen so you see what I'm exactly doing. Dot wrapper is width of 85%, height of 100%, margin of zero auto. Margin top of five item, display of flex, flex direction of column, and then align items of center. Then dot wrapper and the image inside is object fit of cover, margin bottom of 2.5 item. Wrapper is going to be dot row here. We target the rows. So padding of zero top and bottom and one on left and right, width of 750 pixel, display of flex, justify content of space between, align items of center, and margin bottom of 3.5. 75 area then dot row and the title inside which is that ht here that you see is going to receive font size of 36 pixel color of 333 and text transform of capitalize so it's always with a starting with a capital letter then dot row and the span inside is going to have a font weight of both dot row and the span inside the span inside the, the span font weight of 500 color of 666 and font size of 15 pixel then dot controls are going to have display of flex on items of center and gap of 2 irm and here dot edit button is going to be have here outline of none border of one pixel solid transparent background color of 3 e d a 2 2 color is going to be white Padding of 0 0.5 on top and bottom and 1.25 on left and right. Display of flex, gap of 0 0.75 IRM, other items of center, border radius of 12 pixel, cursor, pointer, font size of 18 pixel, font weight of both, and transition of 150 milliseconds. Then edit button and hover is going to have here a background color of FFF, border color of 3 a d a to two three e d a to two uh, and color of again the same color so three e d a to two then the dot delete button but before continuing i want to see the results currently so it looks very nice compared to one minute ago it's centered and stuff here you see and why this is not capitalized i want to see here it is wait so here the ah i forgot here the dot so here dot title and right now it's going to look different Okay, right now you see how it looks a, a lot bigger and it's capital with a capital letter starting here. Nice. Let's continue here. So delete button is going to have outline of none. Then border is one pixel solid transparent. Then come on. One border one pixel solid transparent. Background color is F00. Then color of FFF. Padding of 0 0.5 iron on top and bottom and 1.25 on left and right. Display of flex, gap of 0 0.75 iron, align items of center, border radius of 12 pixel, cursor of pointer, font size of 18 pixel, 
pump rate of bolt and transition of 150 milliseconds. Then dot delete button here is going to be hover. So here background color of FFF, then border color of red, color of F00. Then I want to target here the dot outer is going to have display of flex, align items of center, gap of 0 0.75 IRM, font size of 20 pixel and color of 444. After the dot outer I want to target the dot category, so it have a width of 750 pixel, display of flex, specify content of flex start, align items of center, gap of 1.25 IRM, font size of 18 pixel and font weight of both. So let me see how it's looking. Why it's not targeted here? It's dot category. Ah, it's target. Ah, don't don't worry. It's targeted. I just don't haven't applied anything. Right now we are going to see. So here the spanning site it's going to have panning of 0 0.5 on top and bottom and 1.25 on left and right. Then the background color is again this 3 E D A 3 E D A to 2. Color is going to be white color. Border radius is 12 pixel. Font size of 16 pixel and font weight of 500. So right now you see how it is. And here I don't need that width actually I think. Yes it doesn't change anything. I don't know why I had it earlier. Uh, and here dot right is going to be display of flex. Align items of center. Gap of 1 IRM and cursor is going to be pointer. So this is for the dot right. This here. And here if the block likes why it's not showing me 0. Here I'm going to make it, if it's a false value, it's going to be zero here. Okay, right now you see the zero, because here it defaults to undefined, I think. I think it still works like this, yes. Right now it's showing at zero. Okay, we have no problem. So we're already here with the CSS, nice. It looks very nice in my opinion. Let's make it functional. So let me see which is the first function that I want to write here. Okay, I'm going to write here first the delete. So here, for a try catch, here console block the error. And here, const con confirm model is equal to confirm. Are you sure you want to delete your block question mark? So if this is true, so confirm model is true, const response is equal to await fetch. Come on, HTTP localhost 3000 slash API slash block and here ttx params id and here headers is going to have auto authorization come on authorization colon bearer and session question mark dot user question mark dot access token and here method is going to be delete okay and here if response dot response dot okay here router dot push here like this and here set timeout come on set timeout and here uh, I'm going to make the arrow here and it's going to be after 500 milliseconds so it's a half a second window dot location dot reward nice and uh, let me try to delete it so here I'm just going to copy the ID so we can check in the database that is de deleted so here I click on delete are you sure you want to delete your block? Yes, I'm sure I want to delete my block. And here I see something loading. I think I have deleted it. Probably I forgot to push it or what. Wait, I'm going to delete this set timeout. So let me check in the database if it's deleted. I'm sure it's deleted because we have nothing here. But still, let me see. Find? No, this is a different uh, post here. It ends with... 988 here it ends uh, it ends with 98a so it's a different okay nice and here when i go onto the home page why wow, it's still like this here i still get the dummy data which is something that we need to change it's going to be very simple don't worry so right now i'm going to make the like but before making the like i want to see the dynamic post so i forgot this somehow so here i'm going to make export async function fetch blocks is going to be like this so const response is equal to await fetch 
HTTP localhost 3000 slash API slash log and here cache no store and here return response.json and here just let me write here async and here const blocks are equal to await response.json uh, not response.json what I'm doing here it's a uh, fetch blocks like this and here if the blocks dot length is more than zero we're going to show this and here i'm going to make a condition if blocks question mark dot length is more than zero and here two dots h3 no blocks are currently in the database And here I'm going to apply, of course, a class name, classes dot no blocks. And here the key is going to be, just let me make it like this, wait, like this. And here is going to be underscore ID. And here we pass the block, but inside the block card, we're going to get some other data as well. Here I want to get inside it, uh, instead of image, it's image URL. So this is just straight away change here then likes author id and here the underscore id here and here i'm going to write it data session use is equal to use session again i need to import this string so import use session from next from next alt slash react then again const is liked set is liked here is equal to use state false initially and then block likes come on set block likes is equal to use state zero and here use effect we're going to have a use effect here so just let me change it before doing anything to a use client so use client use client and here if session and likes exist set is like to likes dot includes session question mark dot user question mark dot id like this and here session likes set block likes to likes dot linked and here likes session okay and here let me make the like functionality so here cons handle like we're going to make it here and inside the block details here so we're going to have that function on two different places so don't get confused here try catch console error error and here for the try const response is equal to await fetch http localhost 3000 slash api slash block slash id and here the method is a put is a put method just like this and of course i need to provide headers i forgot so here headers and they're going to have authorization colon bearer session question mark dot user question mark dot access token like this and here if response dot okay else so here if response dot okay actually i don't even need an else so if response dot okay we check if is liked else so here said block likes is previous previous minus one otherwise it's going to be plus oops plus like this here so when this changes then we're going when this changes is going to run this thing here and it's going to ch to change the icon again so we are going to see what do i mean here and of course i need to uh, make it here as an on click to those icons here come on nice so right now you see how it is oops and it's still displaying 12 ah because it's it need to be block likes like this in display zero so right now when i click here it should show us right now one but do i have an error or something id is not defined let me see ah it's an underscore id my bad okay let me refresh the page here and see it still doesn't do anything let me see what is the error right now uh, failed to respond the server responded with a status of 500 
nice. <laughs> let me see what is the problem. So here, let me go to API block ID here. Ah, because here it should be underscore like. So right now, I don't think I have any mistake. Probably, I hope so. Right now, if I click on like, it should like it. Of course, it like it, but it doesn't change the icon. Why it didn't change it? Let me see here. It should be here, block likes here. So right now, if I, if I refresh the page, right now, if I click, what is doing here? Wait, I'm going to fix it. I forgot to write this in here to change. That's why it uh, was behaving like this. Right now, if I refresh and I click here, you see right now it is one like and change the icon. If I refresh the page again, why it's not showing me? Wait, if I click here, I don't get any error. If I click again, it works like this, but is this, is this, is this running? Wait, let me check here. So response. Let me like it. And you see here, let it have false 403. Session.access token. Let me check what is the problem here inside likes and here route. So here it checks. It gives us 403 because of this thing here. So let me log the access token and the decoder token here. And let me run this function again. What is the problem here? G double T malformed as verify. Okay, when I try to, if I try to log this here, so here token. What is the problem here? I'm going to check. And I found the error instantly. It was, wait, I just want to show you. I forgot to call this method. Those Small errors sometimes take a lot of time to fix, but luckily uh, it took me 30 seconds to notice it. So right now, if I click here, you see the response status 200. If I refresh the page here, it should persist here. It should show me one and the like. And why it's not showing me? I want to check here. Probably something in the client, maybe. Let me check here. So block card here. And here I get the likes, right? So here, if I get the likes, here it's undefined. How it's undefined? Wait, I want to console log the block itself. Block is not defined. How it's not defined here? Wait, I just want to do it like this and then return here. Just I want to console log the block here. So here, uh, author ID, created that, author ID. Did I, did I forgot it here? So block. No, it is here. Ah, here I forgot it. It need guys. It need to be an array. So likes are going to be again this same thing object uh, schema dot types dot object ID, but it must be an array. This was the other mistake. So right now I want to delete this block here. So delete. I'm going to create another block right now. So here, just let me create one very fast. Here, let me use this image here. Create. And right now, if it's a success, I don't, yeah, okay, this is working right now, okay. If I go back to my, my home page here, you see, right now, I didn't provide it or what, it should be here. So here, likes, I don't see it. I'm going to make it a default of an empty array. And I'm going to refresh my server right now. I think that may be another problem. So here, I refresh my server. Okay, let me again delete the last block previously. Loading, loading. Right now, delete it and let me. Okay, so let me create here something why I'm here. Okay, uh, mountain. Here, let me pick that, I don't know, this image, click on create. Let me see right now. Okay, it has been created. Nice. And let me check inside the MongoDB if we have that field likes. I mean, probably we would have it. Okay, right now we have the likes. 
okay nice we fit we i think we have fixed this thing here so right now let me remove it and let me return it to what it was previously okay like this here and when i go here block is not defined okay i'm going to delete it here we have no more errors okay and here when i try to like it i got again something response 200 status okay basic i mean did i actually run this function let me check here okay it is working so it is working something is the something in the ui we're going to fix it right now but you see here we have our id here this means that it is working this is the important stuff but i really wonder why ah right now it, we are seeing it wait if i click again here i have noticed some bug here i think it is because of uh it should be i'm not sure i think it should be likes maybe right now let me refresh here we have nothing when i click here okay right now it's working it was this problem the last part here so just change change this here to likes and here likes just like this here okay nice so right now i refresh the page it is here let me see into database if it's here so here loading likes and we are here right now if i click again i refresh nothing is here if i refresh here and if our id is not here it means that it's 100 percent successful working okay we have nothing here okay this means that this functionality is working okay and we literally need to copy paste this function why i'm going to show you because we are going to write this function just now in our blog details page here i have even declared it so we need to do we don't need to do anything besides copy pasting it and here uh i forgot to copy it in order to paste it so here it was inside the the block card so here i'm just going to copy it and paste it like this here right now if i click here i don't get redirected okay i need to fix this thing here it's at least very simple thing here it should be slash block slash here underscore id just like this here and right now when i click here you see i'm redirected and this is the same thing i mean this is dynamic so you see here how it's working let me like it here i want to see if it's here okay this is working here nice nice if i click here the ui doesn't change probably i have not written the i have not written it correctly or what let me check here id is not defined ah this is a problem seriously ctx.params.id let me see if i have something like this i don't think so let me again refresh the page okay data has been fetched and here when i click id is not defined how is id not defined here uh ah my but uh, here i'm changing the block card not the wait ju just don't do anything let me go back to the details page and here it should be ctx.params.id so that was the mistake so right now if i refresh the page let me see here refresh i click here successful you see status 200 from here i can refresh again the page here i have nothing i mean no likes here i click again and you see it has been reflected so we know that this is working so we fetch the data here we have the details page we can delete we can like what is left here i think the delete so uh, not the delete but they did okay so let me create here inside just let me close here the, the the console so here inside the block again let me create here an edit so here we are going to have edit and right now you see here the hierarchy block id edit and right now i want to create here another folder inside the edit so here here i have an id and here page.jsx rfc edit and here edit.module.css here import classes from dot slash <coughs> dot slash edit.module.css and here let's start uh, writing the code so here from now i'm just going to write here the use client because i know that it's going to be use client we're going to use 
you are going to use use state and uh, here I suggest to you that we write here the the state first so here title set title is equal to use state here then const description set description is equal to use state then const category set category is equal to you state here nature const photo set photo is equal to use state again an empty string initially const data and we rename the data to session come on session and we get the status as well use session let me just import it so here come on import curly braces from next out session and here the last thing is here the router so here use router and here it's from navigation okay right now if status is equal to loading i'm just going to copy paste this logic here but where it was inside the create block yes just going to copy paste it here let me close the details just let me copy paste here for the status and here let me make a use effect so here come on use effect here so here that use effect is going to be for fetching the block so here async fetch block is going to come on const response is equal to await fetch http localhost 3000 slash api slash block slash ctx params dot id and here we have the ctx then const block is equal to await response dot json and then set title is going to be block dot title then set description block dot description and here set category block dot category nice and here we instantaneously call the fetch block here i'm going to have uh, the, those same functions that I have in create block here those two here I'm just going to no I'm not going to copy paste them I'm going to write them again from scratch because I, there are some little differences okay so here for the edit let me start typing it so here class name is going to be classes.container classes.wrapper and after the edit we need to write a comment section don't forget uh, then I h2 with edit post here then form and here I'm going to go to my create block and just copy the form here because I don't want I'm just going to copy here everything because it's going to be quite similar the only difference here that is is going to be here it's going to be edit the text is going to be just different and here the other difference let me check ah yes here I need to provide here value properties so here it's going to be title I want to make them controlled here is description and here I have already provided the category so let me see right now when I click on edit what I'm going to be shown package session is not exported wait ah it's from uh, react not session so right now when I refresh the page loading rendered more cooked than the previous render ah I know why uh, because this need to be above the those conditions here handle submit is not defined okay handle submit is equal to async at event dot prevent default like this okay right now what is the next error please okay we, we have to define the images i mean that's not a big problem so here let me import this from react token ai and i see here we have not imported the toast so we can go here to import the the CSS the, the, from the toast in the toast container just like this here okay right now I don't think I have any other errors at least I can think of okay you see here they're instantly populated here everything here the title the description and here the category nice so we are ready with the JS, JSX and I want to import just one of those two functions here so I want to import the upload image because it's going to be literally the same but the handle submit is going to have one difference here. I have bonus condition. 
And let me import here the cloud name and the upload preset that we're going to need. So here, the cloud name and the upload preset from the create block, this thing that we need to have. Again, and here we have the upload image. Okay, right now, let me start typing here the handle submit. So here, we check if title is empty or category is empty or description is empty here toast.error all fields are required and here return and we continue and here we have a try catch of course so here for the cache block console error error and for the try block here let image URL is equal to no if photo so initially the photo is going to be unnamed but if i want to have another photo here i'm going to do this condition here so here new await upload image and here i'm going to even no i don't need to console log it actually and here const body is equal to title description category then if image url is not no then body dot image url is equal to image url and here const response is equal to await fetch http localhost 3000 slash api slash block slash params dot id or ctx dot params dot id come on so here ctx dot params dot id and here headers an object here so here content type application slash json and here come on auto authorization error session question mark user question mark dot access token method put and here body json dot stringify body okay then if the response is not okay here throw new error error has occurred and here const block is equal to await response.json and here router dot push here slash block slash block question mark dot underscore id so this is for the it is basically almost the same function but but those condition you know we didn't have it previously so right now okay i just want to write the css because it doesn't look uh, beautiful at least in my eyes without css let me write the CSS and then we're going to continue. And actually the CSS, I'm not going to lose your time. It's basically the same as here inside the create block. So we can just copy and paste it with the create block. It's the same as I told you. Yeah, you see it's the same. So let me change the title to let's say one to three, three to one description to just nice description, bro. Here a space, category ocean and upload image. Let's upload the image of this burger here. And let's click on edit. So right now, let me see if it's a success. Okay, you see right now, one, two, three, three, two, one, category ocean. And here the new image. Let me just make a new image here. Let me pick this image of the nature here. Let me click on edit. The image has been updated. You see everything works here. It's still liked and it here you see posted 13 minutes ago. So we know the edit is working as we wanted it to work which is great we have no errors and here as i told you we are going to write the comment section so let me go back to my details wait just a second to look at my screen where it was so here here it is okay let me go back here and here let me go to that page so here we are again inside the blog details so here i know we change a lot of pages don't get confused my friends we are inside block details and we are going to write the comment section so here for the comment section i'm going to have here an image just some image and here source is going to be person with a width of 45 pixel and a height of 45 pixel and here i'm going to just leave an empty old tag input is going to be here a type of a text value is going to be comment text we are going to make this state just in a second. Placeholder is going to be type message dot dot dot. And then on change. 
come on on change is going to be here set comment text to event dot target dot value nice then button is going to be here post and here i'm going to have an on click which is going to be handle comment and below this comment input div so below this div here i'm going to have class name dot comments and here if comments question mark dot length is more than zero again i'm going to have some condition and here if it's if it's um, zero i'm going to display here no comments be the first one to leave a comment exclamation mark and here class name is going to be classes dot no comments and here otherwise we're going to comments dot map comment and here i'm going to have an insta return so here comment comment from the components and here key is going to be comment question mark dot id and here comment is going to be just comment and here set comments is going to be here set comments okay so right now we just written a lot of things but we have not imported we have not fetched data so we need to change some things here i instantly find this typo so here it's with like this okay so right now it's time to declare another several other states so here we have just let me uh, make some space here so here const comment text set comment text is equal to u state an empty string initially and here const comments set comments is equal to u state an empty array initially and here we fetch the blocks which is great but we need to fetch the comments as well so here use effect here like this and here uh let me fetch them so here again session actually i don't need a session uh async function fetch comments and let's fetch them so here const response is equal to our is equal to await fetch http localhost 3000 slash api slash comment and here ctx.panams.id and here cache no store so it doesn't store and here const comments are equal to await response dot json and then set comments to the comments here that we get from our server and of course we run the function oops fetch comments nice here let me see if i have something oops uh, person is not defined okay let me define it here so import person from the dot slash dot slash dot slash public or here just wait dot slash dot slash public slash person dot jpeg let me refresh so here on ah handle comment is not defined we're going to define it come on right now do we have any other error no we don't uh here is the comment section <laughs> i know it doesn't look right because we have no css applied but before applying the css actually i'm going to apply the css first yes i prefer to have some css okay so here let me go to the block.module.css and let's go so here comments and here oops dot comment section just let me scroll down here so you see what i'm styling is going to have margin of zero auto then margin top of 5 irm width of 50 percent display of flex flex direction of column justify content of center align items of center border of one pixel solid 555 and border radius of 20 pixel then dot comment input is going to be a panic of one item with of 100 percent display of flex align items of cent align items of center gap of 1.5 item and border bottom of one pixel solid 555 then dot comment input and the image inside is going to be object fit of cover and border radius of 50 percent and do i have written wait i want to see i have written the width and height okay so i don't need to write them then dot comment input and the input inside is going to have flex of one so it takes the every the whole remaining space then outline none 
border none panic of 0 0.25 irm and border bottom of one pixel solid 555 then dot comment input is going to have uh, to target the button so outline is none uh, then border is none background color is going to be 0707b5 color is going to be FFF panic of 0 0.25 fire m and 0 0.75 fire m border radius is 8 pixel font size of 17 pixel and cursor of pointer nice and then dot comments are going to have here max height of 300 pixel overflow auto so if it's more than 300 pixel it's going to make it scrollable 1.25 irm for the margin top with of 100 percent panning of one irm display of flex flex direction of column align items of center gap of two irm here then the dot no comments is going to have here panic of 1.25 irm font size of 24 pixel and color of 2 to 2 and then dot access the night is going to have width of 100 percent text align of center margin top of 5 irm font size of 32 pixel and font weight of bold and this is the css so right now you see it looks quite well i mean it looks like a normal comment section but we need to make it functional and to display the comment and just one last thing here i want to make it here i knew you see here we don't have any space and i was like okay how i have not written margin top and here i have written margin top of 5 ir and here i forgot the m so here m and right now is going to be spaced out nice i can even make it 7.5 actually okay so right now it looks great okay uh let me go to the to the I need to go to the one component which is the comment component so here let me go here so here components where are you comment nice here I get the comment in the set comments and here I'm again going to fetch uh, not to fetch but to get the session here so here you session again import you session from next out react okay then const token is equal to session question mark dot user question mark dot access token this time in this component i have got it out instead of writing all of this and here let me first write the jsx so here class name is going to be equal to classes dot container then class name is going to be classes dot wrapper and here classes dot left and then classes dot right so first let me write the left side so again image with a source of person width of 45 pixel and height of 45 pixel and again an empty old tag then uh, classes dot user data is going to be have here h4 of session of comment question comment question mark dot outer id question mark dot username and below that h4 i'm going to have a span with the class name here of time ago and here format so here format comment question mark dot created at and here i'm going to import the format from time ago dot js below that div here the user data i'm going to display inside a span the comment the text comment itself so here comment dot text and here inside the right side i'm going to check if session question mark dot user question mark dot id is equal to comments dot outer id question mark dot underscore this means that we are the author of the comment so we have the access to delete it so here b s trash and here class name is going to be classes dot trash icon and then on click is going to be handle delete comment okay so let me declare this function async and then uh, try catch and here console error error and here await fetch http localhost 3000 slash api slash comment slash not sla uh, yes slash dollar sign curly braces comment question mark dot underscore id and here headers is going to be out 
authorization authorization with a better and the token here and below I'm going to have a method delete this time we're going to use the delete one and here set comments we take the previous comments and we, read, we filter them so here previous dot filter comment and here comment question mark dot id is not equal to comment question mark underscore id so we basically delete the comment from the state as well as deleting, deleting it from the database so let me check here let me try to comment does it work wait did i make the functionality to comment i'm not sure ah, i haven't okay so we need to make the functionality to comment and then we're going to try to delete the comment itself here okay at least the functionality to comment is not so hard so here first if comment text question mark dot linked is less than two this means that it's very small comment like what we're going to type so here toast dot come on or just i'm just going to return it wait okay i'm going to use the toast so here toast dot error comment must be at least two characters Long. and here I'm going to go to the here to copy just the toastify just to notify the user that he cannot leave short comments and here I'm going to come on toast container like this okay then uh, try catch block here again console lock error and here let's go so const body is equal to block id params dot id and here it's ctx dot params so here ctx dot params dot id then outer id is going to be session question mark dot user question mark dot id and here text is comment text nice then const response is equal to await fetch http localhost 3000 slash api slash comment and here headers is going to be in the following so here content type application slash json and then uh what is it ah yes the authorization authorization bearer and here the session question mark dot user question mark dot access token then oops uh it is method of post so here we create a comment and here the body is json dot stringify the body itself and here const comment or new comment actually so new comment is equal to await response dot json here and here we we add it to the state so here previous come on previous return new comment dot 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 previous and here set comment text to an empty string so have i made it to track the state here yes i have so right now when i i want to refresh the page and right now i want to try to comment so here my comment click on post uh oof, there is something here uh the error what is the error let me check here I just want to refresh the state then then i'm going to comment and try the error person is not defined is it this thing here wait import person from dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash public slash person dot jpeg okay right now if i refresh the page what we're going to see uh, bs trash is not defined okay import bs trash from react icons bs if I again refresh the page, are we going to get any errors? Uh, failed to construct image, please use the new operator. Wait, I probably forgot to import it. Yes, I forgot to import it. So right now we're going to import it. Do I have another error here? Let me again refresh. And right now I don't see to have any error. Okay, we don't have the, uh, the CSS. So let's write the CSS right now. And we're going to try again to comment. I just want to see the comments beautifully. Okay, so here dot container height of 100% and width of 100%. Then dot wrapper is going to be here width of 85%, height of 100%, margin of zero auto. So come on, zero auto. 
display of flex justify content of space between enter line items of center the dot left is going to be display of flex and gap of 1.25 firm then dot left and the image inside so here width of 40 pixel height of 40 pixel object fit of cover and border radius of 50 percent then dot left and here the user data is going to be display of flex flex direction of column then align items of flex start and gap of 0.25 irm then i want to target a time ago so here time ago font size of 40 15 pixel and color of 555 and then trash icon cursor of pointer to indicate that it is clickable so right now you see the comment looks very nice for such a few styles so right now if i try to okay you see it's working okay it's working let me refresh the page to see that they are fetched okay they are here and i want to leave to delete every single comment except the mine comment this the first one okay and here you see new user two minutes ago so the delete functionality works as expected so i think we are ready with everything the last part of our journey is to deploy our application so let's deploy it okay so my friends in order to deploy the application we need to do several things the first one is i have noticed that when i i deployed my application earlier without filming the video and there was an error which was pretty interesting at least to me here we need to go to login and you see here we have this sign and instead of this I, we need to write it like this like a special character and i'm just just let me see how i need to write it i have posted it where it was here we're going to see what do i mean by this special sign here so here source app login and page.jsx and here yes so it was here like this and i need to do it on uh, the register as well so here the login i need to do it on the register as well and there was one more place which i had to do it which was inside the page.js here in the literally home page here where, where have i written the web dev mania block website here i need to do it like this here nice so it's like this then i have to do and um, wait do i need to do another thing let me see here so here uh cd so here i can just do git add, add git commit commit git push origin main here it should be git branch m main git push origin main okay we're going to push the changes and right now i'm going to try to deploy the application so here repositories here let me copy the url and here okay this was the before filming the video where i deployed the application i want to show you right now how we can do it from scratch so here you just need to log in to make an account or something okay then you are into the dashboard here while you are at the dashboard you see here add new click on add new and here project then uh, you need to import it let's say can i just paste the link if i paste the link would it show okay so it is block hyphen 13.js here he, i think i have ch yes i have pushed the changes so okay i'm going to import it and here i just need to place my environmental variables which are those here okay let me paste them deploy and it's going to take several or at least one or two minutes to see if it's going to be successfully deployed and here you see the other error because here i'm going to show directly here into the layout here i use use client but you cannot use it alongside with the metadata and i did use use client because of this session provider so it's a very easy fix don't worry here inside the app folder i'm going to make provider.js here not the, the app folder wait uh, i want it to be in the source folder not in that but the source folder okay here inside the source folder provider.js and here i want to literally just copy this here i don't want this and i don't want this so here ex const export const provider is equal to it gets the children like this 
and here return of course here i need to have some curly braces and here it is being returned and of course it is getting this like this so right now let me try to just wrap it with that provider like this okay so right now i want to test if it's going to run just with npm rev dev if it's going to have no errors or something here cd wait why it's because i need to write npmi that's why okay and right now npm run dev i'm going to type it while it's installing so it's going to show us in a second okay npm run dev and right now let me see if i have any error i think i i, I need to rem i think i yes it's not i think i need to remove it this thing here the use client directive and right now it's loading and we're going to see if we actually have an error or something session provider is not defined oh of course i forgot to import it so here let me import it import session come on session provider from next out react i have some error here schema hasn't been registered for model uh react ah yes i got the problem so here i need to use to write use client let me see okay right now i have no errors okay it's working which is great so right now i'm again going to add the changes and then push them so here git push origin main and right now i am again going to try to deploy it i forgot about this error there were two errors though this was the second one so right now i'm just going to again import copy and paste the environmental variables just like this and right now i'm again going to deploy it finally friends our application has been deployed but but there is a one big problem as you see here we have that error and don't worry it is something that is expected and right now we're going to finally fix it and it's going to be deployed so here copy this URL here that you see and then go here to the search and write http localhost 3000 so everywhere that you have made an api call with this URL you need to change it to this thing here so you see right now and the end you see here slash and then api whatever it was but change the localhost 3000 and do that for literally every single one so i'm going to do it here here then here and here and let's go let's go i know it can be quite annoying to do that for everyone but this is the last part of our application so we need to do it here nice and we have several more left so here and one more left nice finally so here git add dot git commit commit git push origin main to push the changes back to our repository and right now let me go back here and it will be ready in two or three minutes so here we are let me try to log in here i click on login new user at gmail.com one two three one two three and let me see if i'm redirected back to the home page and you see so guys this was for this video and see you next time bye